I believe that's our ring, Abner. Ah. Bridget Air presents the new Lum and Abner show. <laughs> Frigid Air, a division of General Motors, brings you a brand new kind of visit for those old characters down in Pine Ridge. Featuring Clarence Hartzell as Ben Withers, Gloria Blondell, the music of Felix Mills, and starring your old favorites, Lum and Abner. America's number one refrigerator is Frigidaire. Yes, any way you look at it, America's number one refrigerator is Frigidaire. Number one in popularity, for more Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. Number one in thrilling new advantages, as you can see for yourself at any Frigidaire dealers. And number one in dependability, for Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by General Motors, and this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, is your guarantee of lasting satisfaction. So when it comes to a new refrigerator for your home, remember this. The first name you think of is the right one to buy. Frigidaire, America's number one refrigerator. <laughs> Now, as we look in on the little community of Pine Ridge, we find Lum in the Jotham Down store blocking Abner's path to the door. Listen. Now, wait a minute, Abner. Where do you think you're going? Lum, I've got to mail this letter for Ed Stoddard. Now, just why would Ed Stoddard want you to mail a letter for him? He's the postmaster. Well, not for a while he ain't. See, this letter is to the post office department telling them to send out a, a substitute for to take his place. Why? What's wrong with Ed? Well, you know how absent-minded he's been getting here late. Oh, I know it, I know it. Just the other day, I seen him sauntering along in the rain, holding his hand out in front of him like he's carrying an umbrella. He told me later he didn't realize he'd forgot it till the rain stopped and he reached up to close it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just wait till you hear this. He drove home last night, drove in the driveway, got out, opened the garage door... And when he seen the garage was empty, he yelled, Help! Somebody stole my car. <laughs> oh, you never. He did. Yeah, he done it. And then his woman, she heard the commotion, thought he was a thief, and throw the iron skillet and hit him on the head. That woke up the neighbor's dog, and he started chasing him. Then Caleb Weehunt thought it was somebody after his chickens, so he taken a shotgun to Ed, and now Ed is flat in bed on his stomach. <laughs> Goodness alive. I don't know where they got the car back or not. Granny, does it sound like you'll be laid up for a while? Well, that's why he writ this letter to get a substitute. Yeah, you better get that in the mail quick. Or wait a minute. Wait here. Hold on. Give me that letter. You gonna mail it? Well, I'm gonna tear it up. Hey, now, Lum, don't do that. That's government matter. Yeah, and I'm doing the government a favor. Ain't no use in spending all that money to send a substitute out to Pine Ridge when we got a man right here that can handle the job. Yeah, but he's full of buckshot. I don't mean Ed. I mean me. You? Yes, sir. With my set of brains, I'll run that post office like it ain't never been run before. Dear Ella, hope this finds you well. Abner, cut out reading them postcards. You ain't the postmaster. I am. Ruby is having trouble with George again. Abner, I'm going to have to throw you right out of the post office. Because George keeps falling off of the wagon. Abner. Doggy, I hope he didn't hurt himself. <laughs> Look, Abner, you... I don't know George, but he must not be very smart, Lon. Keeps falling off. Doggy, you'd think he'd learn how to sit in a wagon and hang on after two or three <laughs> Abner, that mail is U.S. government property. Tampering with it is a federal offense. And on top of that, if Ella Simpson ever caught you reading her postcard, she'd massacre you. Ruby says next time she sees George, she is going to shoot... Abner, give me that card. Lon, this is serious. Ruby's going to I shoot... I don't care what she's going to do. Here comes Ella Simpson, and she'll do worse than that to you. Oh, my goodness. Now, 
Well, morning, Miss Simpson. Why, Lum, are you running the post office now? Yeah, I'm the new letterhead. <laughs> How about some nice fresh stamps today? No, thank you. Say, you got any mail for me? Why, yeah, I believe there is a postcard. <laughs> Just happened to have it in my hand. Here you are. Who's it from? Well, I ain't got the least ideas. I ain't neither. But you better get in touch with Ruby right away. <laughs> hey, Chuck, Abner. That George is going to get it. What'd you say, Abner? He said that's a gorgeous bonnet. Where'd you get it? Huh? <laughs> well, I got it over to the county seat. I only paid a dollar ninety-eight cents for it. It sure don't look like it. <laughs> but everything costs twice what it ought to nowadays, ain't it? <laughs> well, good luck to you on your new job here, Lum. Thank you, Sister Simpson. Come in again. Lum, how could you stand there talking about hats when there's a murder going on? Listen, Abner, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for reading somebody else's mail. That's the lowest sneakiness one thing a human can do. But, Lom, Ruby's gonna shoot George. No, she ain't. All it said was the next time Ruby sees George, she's gonna shoot him a game of sh snooker. Oh! <laughs> That's a game I ain't even played. <laughs> Only trouble now, she's liable to club him with a pool cue, you know that? No, because when she went on to say, uh, well, I don't know what it said. Why don't you get on back to the jot em down store? Well, all right, but what I come down here to tell you was that you better give up this post office junk, Lum. Squire Skimp says you're going to get yourself in trouble. Oh, sassy brass. Squire's just jealous. Well, he says that you don't know nothing about the post office regulations. Oh, don't I? Well, just stick around and watch how I handle the next customer. I'll show you who knows about postal regulations. Well, I know, because you got a good in to work on. <laughs> huh? There comes Ben Withers. Uh-oh. Oh, well, hello, Lum. How's the new postmaster? Oh, getting along just fine, Ben. I wonder if you could send a registered letter for me, Lum. Oh, you bet your life I... Registered? Yes. You can handle that, can't you? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> can I handle it? <laughs> uh, registered. Hmm. You wouldn't want to just send that special deal ever, would you? Well, yes, all right. Well, good. But I want it registered, too. Uh, <laughs> All right, Abner, you keep out of this. I never said a word. <laughs> now, watch what you're thinking, then. Uh, Let's see, now, you want this letter registered, huh? Yes, registered. Uh-huh. Registered. That's correct. Registered. Uh-huh. Uh, how about sending it airmail? I want it registered, love. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Huh? What's the matter, Mr. Postmaster? Having trouble? Ha! 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 And hash up. Lum, well, I want that sent delivered to addressee only. Uh, I thought you wanted it registered. Fine. Huh? You've got a rubber stamp there that says delivered to addressee only on it. Just stamp that on the envelope. Oh, well, that's simple enough, sure. Uh, here we are. Yeah. Come in again soon, Ben. Well, wait, that's the wrong stamp. That says return insufficient address. <laughs> Abner, will you get out of here? Oh. Well, maybe you better let me get back there and fix this letter up right. No, now, you stay right where you're at, Ben. I'm the postmaster here. Yeah, he's the postmaster. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Let's see now. Well, what you're supposed to do next is take the postmark stamp and cancel it. Cancel it? You mean you don't want to send it after all? Certainly I want to send it, and I've got to register it because I'm enclosing quite a sizable amount of cash. One dollar and 29 cents. Is that all? Fine. I'm sending for a can of Captain Sprug's Quick Cock. What in the world is that? Yes. <laughs> Captain Sprug of Mount Idy, inventor of the flat bottom canoe, has done it again. Uh oh. He has invented a caulking material for mending boat leaks which can be applied underwater. <laughs> well, they put it on with a fountain pen. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh if you want to, but I was present when the captain personally tested Sprug's quick caulk in the waters of beautiful Lake Silk. Well, don't tell us about it. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> A large crowd was on hand as Captain Sprug launched his flat-bottom canoe with nothing aboard but a hatchet, 
and a can of Sprug's Quick Cough. Huh. Oh, yes, and a putty knife. Well, that was very interesting, Ben. Well, I'll see you later. Fifty feet from the shore, the captain raised the hatchet in full view of the spectators and chopped a hole in the bottom of the canoe. Oh, my sakes alone. <laughs> As the crowd gasped, the captain calmly laid down the hatchet, picked up the can of Sprug's quick cock, bowed to the audience, and stepped over the side to repair the damage. <laughs> I'll be dead blame. Forty-five minutes later, all the water had been pumped out of Captain Sprug. <laughs> and plans were underway to dredge for the canoe. Dredge for it? Fine. They never did find the putty knife. <laughs> well, now, about this registered letter... Or wait a minute. The captain's moved. How do you know? Well, just look what's stamped on the envelope. Returned in sufficient address. My <laughs> granny, you're right. The lucky thing, I found this out before I sent the letter. So long. <laughs> well, Mr. Postmaster, you sure handled that something wonderful. Well, leastways, I never lost no money on a transaction. Now, um, why don't you give up this idea right here and now? You've been postmaster for a whole half a day and you ain't sold a nickel's worth of stamps or nothing else. I know it, and I don't understand it. A body would think I didn't know a thing about business. Yes, it is easy to get that impression. <laughs> well, I don't think it's me. I think it's the system. Huh? This place is in a rut. For instance, take them three-cent stamps there. Yeah. They've been selling them for the same price for years and years. <laughs> Well, you're right there, yeah. Why don't they ever have a sale on them? Why don't they ever give them two money orders for the price of one? What's the matter with this outfit, anyway? Well, I don't know. Just old-timey, I reckon. Well, Abner, I, I've just got the greatest one idea I ever had in my life. Beginning tomorrow, I'm going to put on the first and the biggest post office sale this country's ever saw. <laughs> Can you do that? I'm doing it. I, grannies, I'll make them post office fellers in Washington sit up and take notice. <laughs> Their eyes will bug out like a trumped on toad frog. <laughs> No, Miss Bates, there's nobody in the store but me and Mr. Niles, the Frigidaire representative. Uh huh. How's Wilbur? Oh, finally got it, huh? How long a sentence? What do you know, Mr. Niles? Mr. Bates's boy, Wilbur, finally got the prize in his English class for composing the longest sentence. Well, good for Wilbur. How's that, Miss Bates? Your cake's what? Oh, that's a shame. Well, why do you suppose they keep falling? Keep falling? Well, here, I can help her with that problem. Uh-huh. Not even enough? Uh, well, uh, uh, tell her to look at one of the new frigid air electric ranges. Tell her especially to look at the big, even heat ovens. She can tell in a jiffy why they're such wonderful bakers. Hey, uh, better let me talk to her. But you don't understand, Mr. Niles. She... Oh, hello, Mrs. Bates. Say, uh, when you bake pies and cakes in a frigid air electric range, you don't have to keep looking at them. Just set the temperature control, and it automatically keeps the right baking temperature without ever having to check up on it. The heat is so evenly distributed that cakes and pies just won't fall. But, uh, Mr. Niles... Well, of course, a frigid air electric range is so simple, even a child can operate it. Just turn a dial for the exact heat you want. On the three surface units, you have a choice from fast frying to slow simmer, and the economical deep well thermizer converts to a fourth surface unit in a jiffy. And, Mrs. Bates, uh, I'd like to talk to you about the beauty of this new frigid air electric range. How wonderfully easy it is to keep clean. How cool it is to cook on. How you can prepare a whole meal even while you're out of the house. What? You have? Oh, well, all right then. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Bates. What's the matter with you, Ben? Mrs. Bates already has a frigid air electric range. Yes, and she's crazy about it. The only reason her cakes keep falling is Mr. Bates built a shelf for her to put her cakes on, and Mr. Bates is a very poor carpenter. <laughs> Granny's happening. In another half hour, we'll be ready to start the big postal sale. 
Now, let's check over our list and see what we've did so far. Uh, get signs printed. Check. Make window display out of money order blanks. Check. Buy punch boards. Check. Wait, I forgot to give you any money. What'd you buy the punch boards with? Check. <laughs> Check. Check. All right. Uh, get jar of beans for guessing contest. Well, Cedric was supposed to bring them over last night, but he ain't showed up yet. That boy, he can't recollect nothing. He ain't got a brain in his head. Check. <laughs> I guess you better go out and start hunting for him. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. There he comes right now, Lom. Swan, that boy's the slowest mortal that ever drawed breath. Oh, hearty. Well, I got the beans. <laughs> well, it's about time, Cedric. What taking you so long? You got the beans yesterday. Yes, Mom, but it take me all night long to cook them. <laughs> For the land's sake, Cedric, we never wanted them cooked. Of course not. You can't count cooked beans. Now get over to the jot them down store and get a jar of uncooked ones. And hurry up. Oh, uh, what what kind do you want? N navy beans? Yeah, they're fine. Kidney beans are nice. All right, get kidneys. I thought you wanted beans. <laughs> Hi, huh. grannies, I wish you two idiots would clear out of here before I go stark raving mad crazy. Both of you go get the beans, but hurry back, Abner, because I'm going to need your help quick as the rest starts. Yeah, all right, all right. I'll call Mamie, the central girl, and have her ring the fire alarm so as I can make a public announcement about the sale over the party line. Yeah, all right. Well, come on, Cedric. Just get out of here. Hello. Oh, hello, Mamie. <laughs> this is Lum Edwards, and I want you to What's ring the... What's the name? Lum Edwards, and I want... Lum Edwards? Yeah, that's right. He ain't at the jot -em down store. Try calling him at the post office. Well, I I don't want to call him. Who? Lum Edwards. I'm sure you'll find him at the post office. I know I will, because that's where I'm at now. Well, ain't he there? Who? Lum Edwards. Oh, for pity's sakes. Why don't you leave a message for him when he comes in? Look, Mamie, I just want you to ring the fire alarm so that what, I... What's that name again? Whose name? Who are you calling? I said ring the fire alarm. Sounds like you're saying fire alarm. Well, I am. How do you spell that? F I R. Look, Mamie, I don't think you understood me. Who are you? Lum Edwards. I told you you can reach him at the post office. Goodbye. Oh, me. Say, Lum, you were wrong. The captain hasn't moved, so I want to send this registered letter after all. Well, that's just dandy great. Now, you get back there and register it yourself. I'm leaving. I'll be back later. Where are you going, Lum? Fine. What? <laughs> Kind of an answer was that. <laughs> Pine Ridge Post Office. Is Lum Adderts there? No, he just stepped out for a minute. Well, when he comes in, tell him some knucklehead wants him. <laughs> What's his name? Who? Fine. I'll tell him to call right away. <laughs> Uh, sir, what can I do for you, sir? Well, I'm Inspector Burton of the Postal Department, and I want to see the postmaster. Oh, yes, you must be the knucklehead the operator mentioned. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Yes. Well, Mr. Edwards is out right now, but he ought to be back shortly. Is he the postmaster here? Well, not really. The real one is home in bed, so Mr. Edwards appointed himself postmaster. Appointed himself? Wait a minute, did you say you were with the U.S. Postal Department? I certainly did. Well, my stars. Then you must know Hilmer Grossen. <laughs> Who? Yeah. <laughs> Hilmer was in the post office game for a number of years. Best postmaster Mount Idy ever had, until they fired him for being conscientious. Well, I've never heard of a man being fired for that. Well, that's what happened to Hilmer. His wife even divorced him on account of it. Oh, come now. Elmer Grossen loved the post office work so much that he delivered every letter that came in person. When Kenneth Zekafus moved to Hatfield, Elmer stamped please forward on the letter and personally delivered it to Kenneth at Hatfield. Well, I don't think they'd discharge him for that. Then a letter came in for Rudford Kelp, who had also moved. Elmer did the same for him. Well, where'd Rudford move to? Somewhere in northern Finland. <laughs> Finland? 
On his return a year later, Mrs. Grosson based her suit on desertion. Helmer put up the defense that he was so far north, the days were six months long, and thus he was only gone two days. <laughs> he lost the case. Yes. Well, tell me more about this Mr. Edwards. Ex-postmaster Grosson now runs a small Finnish steam bath in Mount Ada. I don't care about him. What about this Mr. Edwards? Oh, he's not here right now. He's out making final arrangements for his stamp sale. Uh, stamp sale? Fight. Well, look, I'm going to drop in a little later and have a chat with this Mr. Edwards. But don't you tell him. Oh, <laughs> What a surprise he was. I certainly am, and what a surprise. All right, like Granny's Abner, the sale's on. Let them come in. Yeah, well, wait a minute, Lom. There's one more sign we ain't put up yet. Which one's that? This one that says, Fall Clearance Sale. All postage stamps drastically reduced to half price. Oh, yeah. Yeah, stand that and write up over the ink well there. Yeah, yeah. And that reminds me, did you bend up the pinpoints? Yeah. <laughs> me and Cedric played a game of darts with them. We got them bent up to where you couldn't tell them from the pins they got in the biggest post offices in the country. <laughs> Good. I just don't understand why the old postmaster never thought of any of these ideas. no. He never even advertised. No, no. <laughs> hey, Long, get ready, get ready. Yonder comes our first customer. Well, good. Make him think we're doing a big business. That'll help the sale. Yeah, yeah. Who is that fella? I don't know. Looks like some out-of-town stranger. Yeah. He ain't a local stranger. <laughs> uh, whoever he is, I bound you he ain't never seen a post office run like I'm running this. <laughs> <laughs> well, come in, mister. Yeah, come right cool. in. My name's Burton. Well, you're just in time for the big sale, Mr. Burton. Yeah, see that sign over there? Three centers, two cents, two centers, one cent. <laughs> yes. Uh, just how many stamps have you sold at this rate? Well... Oh, uh... hundreds of them. Just hundreds. Hmm, that's interesting. Tell me more about this sale. Sounds even better than I imagined. Oh, you heard about it, huh? And you're from out of town, ain't you? Yes, I'm from Washington. Washington? Well, what do you know about that? I'll show you what advertising will do, Abner. Yeah. <laughs> what I want to know is which one of you is responsible for all this. Well, <laughs> I don't like to brag on myself, but I'm your man. You may be right. I helped. <laughs> Good. I want that information, too. Well, thank you. Now, uh, <laughs> let's see now. You're Mr. Edwards, aren't you? Yeah, that's I. Mr. Edwards, do you know anything at all about postal regulations? <laughs> oh, them old moldy wore out things. I'm making up a whole new set. <laughs> <laughs> you are, eh? Oh, yeah. You might say I'm revoluting the whole postal system. <laughs> He's the most revolting postmaster this town's ever had. <laughs> Abner, you're just saying that. No! Mom, everybody says that. <laughs> oh, yeah, they love me here in Pine Ridge. Mr. Edwards, have you informed Washington of any of those little changes you're making? Well, not quite yet. I'm going to surprise it on them all at once. I'm going to make monkeys out of them old fogies. Oh. <laughs> old fogies, eh? Oh, yeah. Would you like to take a chance on the punch board? Punch board? Yeah, see, if you get the lucky number, you get a free money order. <laughs> this is incredible. Oh, you ain't saw nothing yet. See that jar of beans there? Guess how many beans there are in it, Mr. Burton. Yeah, try 3,479. Blabber mouth. Say, what is this, some kind of a game? Yeah, you see, whoever guesses closest to the number of beans in there gets a postal savings account with double the regular interest for two years. <laughs> double the interest? You can't possibly mean that. Oh, you don't know me, Mr. Burton. <laughs> when the giver man finds out what I'm doing here, they'll have me working for them for the rest of my life. <laughs> Mr. Edwards, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> well, don't 
jump all over me, Lom. I never knowed Mr. Burton was a post office inspector. That's what I get for hiring unexperienced help. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're kicking about. He dropped the charges again. All he done was just forbid you to ever set your foot inside that post office again as long as you live. And pounded his fist. That's all he does. I don't care so much about that. It's just downright humiliating to have him hold that election to find the most reliable man in Pine Ridge to take my place. Well, I can tell you right now, I don't care who they elect. He don't, huh? What, he's standing here outside the post office window waiting for him to count the votes for them. Wait a minute, they'll, they'll hear us. Oh. Yeah, I think Ben Withers is getting ready to read the results. Listen. Well, Mr. Burton, here's how the voting tallies up. All right. Ezra C. Strunk. Oh, that varmint. Gets two votes. Huh? Walt Bates. <laughs> Him. Gets <laughs> seven votes. Good for Walt. Who is it? <laughs> and here's your most reliable man, Mr. Burton, with 309 votes. All right. Fine. It's... Well, who is it? This will set the post office back 20 years. It's Lum Edwards. <laughs> Lum and Abner will be back in just a moment, but first, here's an important question. Would you like to own a refrigerator that has a different kind of cold for every different kind of food? Then visit your Frigidaire dealer and ask to see his many models of the Frigidaire refrigerator, the only refrigerator in the world with the famous meter miser, simplest cold-making mechanism ever built. Uh, here, Lom, uh, now that you're the official postmaster, why, you get to read all the postcards, so uh, what does this in here say? Oh, it's from one of the Abernathy boys to his mama. Well, all three of them boys are with the government, you know. One of them's in the Army, and one's in the Navy, and the other's in Alcatraz. <laughs> yeah, th this is from Sood. He's the one at Alcatraz. Well. Hmm. Says he ain't at all satisfied. <laughs> The new Lemon Abner show is brought to you each week by Frigidaire Division of General Motors. Manufacturers of a complete line of home appliances, air conditioners, and refrigeration equipment for American business. The script is written by Roz Rogers and Betty Boyle, with music by Felix Mills. So until next Sunday night, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles saying good night for Frigidaire, America's number one refrigerator. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System.